Hi everyone, this one is going to be the final video of my Assistance API series. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at custom GPTs, which were launched by OpenAI on Dev Day. We're going to look at how to build your own custom GPT. What is the structure or anatomy of a custom GPT? How does it work? And we're also going to take a look at how you can implement APIs or actions in custom GPTs. So these GPTs can reach outside of OpenAI with APIs that you can then extract information and chat with in your custom GPT. All right, let's take a look. Custom GPTs were introduced by OpenAI on Dev Day. What these do is OpenAI has opened up a platform for you to create your own GPT that can do a specific set of tasks. You can feed it with knowledge information, knowledge base articles, and the most important thing, you can also give it ability to interact with APIs. Now, this was already available in OpenAI ChatGPT through plugins, but what they've done is they've kind of ubiquified the interface and they're calling it actions now. Before we take a look at how to do that, let's take a quick demo of what I built. In this demo, we have a custom GPT called US Regulations, which is using an API to fetch the regulatory documents from regulations.gov. It's summarizing a brief description of the document, inferring the content of the document by the descriptions, and it will also help us get some actions out of the document. For example, any milestones like this document or regulation, common period is open. As you can see in this case, we are interested in the comment period there. So it's able to provide some inference and details. And it also helps us ask questions about what is common. I will show you exactly how to go about building the exact same GPT and we'll do it together. Now let's take a look at custom GPT and understand the anatomy of a custom GPT. All right. So this is the anatomy of creating a custom GPT. To build your own GPT, you have to go to this link right here. What that allows you to do is it, what that takes you is it takes you to this spot where you can build your own custom GPTs. Now, before we build our own custom GPTs, what OpenAI has prescribed is that you can converse with the custom GPT and build it while talking to it. But you can also go directly into this screen, which is called the configure and build it on your own very quickly. So let me talk to you a little bit about what this screen means and what, what are the details here. This is the anatomy of creating a custom GPT. So in the configure screen, you will see multiple different areas to fill out. What we are gonna do is we're gonna build out a bot called US Regulations GPT. All we're doing with this GPT is reaching out to the regulations.gov, grabbing the documents that you want, and then chatting about them and giving us some information about them. So in order to do that, you have to start with giving a clear name of what your GPT is about, um, setting a profile pic of your GPT. You can typically do this with DALI if you want um, on the same interface. You have to give a description of what your GPT is about. Mind you, the name and the description is what shows up in the store, so make sure you're clear on objective of what you're trying to do. Then you gotta go to your custom instructions. Now, so it's very important for this to be a place where you iterate upon, so you get the perfect custom instruction that you want your GPT to have. In this example, we're gonna ask it to look at some documents from the government website, etc. but we're also gonna ask it to use actions and call the API to get some documents. So you wanna be able to like clearly articulate what are the names of the actions you're taking. Let's take a look at what those are in a couple of minutes. After you fill your custom instructions out, you wanna give it some conversation starters. These are your pop-ups that land when you open a custom GPT. And after that, you will need to select any knowledge base documents that you want to update and so on and so forth. Um, or any pictures that you want to upload and so on and so forth. A quick PSA here. Be careful of what you include in the knowledge base documents. There have been reports that 
information from the documents are very clearly available when people are using custom GPT. Again, this is a tool that was just released last week. So you expect to see a lot of security leaks, etc. cetera, um, in the first beginning weeks. So be very careful of what you put there. You want to be able to put there things that you are comfortable with being in the public domain. So think of that as your yardstick for that. Then you go ahead and update any tools and capabilities you want your custom GPT to have. In this example, we've expected it all. Uh, after that, we pick our API actions and I will show you how this is made and so on and so forth. Uh, after that, we go in and make sure to either select or unselect this setting, which is on by default. If you don't want your data that you are using in your custom GPT or the interactions that the users are having, please, uh, to be used in the training of other models, please unselect that. It is on by default. So just another PSA for you folks. Let's go and take a look at what the details of this action link is. So this is our actions part of our custom GPT. Here we are going to be talking through some of the details around what these endpoints are and so on and so forth. So first of all, your schema is a very important place. Every API call that's done in the recommended way should have what is called an open API, an open API standard associated with it. So that is what you would want to put here. So this reads information in open API 3.0 version format. Remember, it's JSON version of OpenAPI format. Most of the files that you will find out there will be YAML, so you can just use your ChatGPT to convert that for you, uh, or you could try to do it yourself. An important distinction here when you use it in this custom GPT is that you would want to provide what's called an operation ID to this schema. And this is what gets reflected here as an available action. So this is a thing that doesn't exist in most of the specification files that you find. You have to add that when you're trying to action it here as an item. In addition to that, you have your API key that you would want to put there. Uh, Open API supports these below API keys. Um, and in addition to that, you definitely have to put the privacy policy link there because if you do not, you're not able to publish your GPT. All right, excellent. So now that we've seen the anatomy of creating this custom GPT. Let's take a look at figuring out how you can get these API keys and stuff. I can show you how I got it for this purpose, but you can perform the same actions for your own custom GPTs as well. To get API, to get the API key, I went to the OpenGSA regulations.gov regulations API. I was able to scroll I went to here, then I signed up to getting started. You got to give your information so you get your own key. And once you get your own key, you can go and check out that there will always be an open API specification file. Any good organization that's published APIs will have that file. Fetch that. Once you fetch that, you will see that this will be a very long specification file. It'll be in YAML, obviously, in some cases. You'd want to take that. It looks something like this. What it basically tells you is the documentation of the API, but in JSON format or YAML format. So system can read what the documentation of the API is. You can take that uh, file, send it through ChatGPT if you want, and ask it to convert it to a JSON. Post getting that, you may want to remove the sections you don't want to call. There will be a lot of API calls that you can do, but you have to pick and choose the ones you want to do. In this situation, I really wanted to understand and get the list of documents, and I wanted to filter on a search item that I search term, and I wanted it to filter on a search term that I kind of gave it. Once you have this, it's time for you to move on to the next step, which is providing the custom GPT with this API in the schema and publishing your custom GPT. And that's what we've done here. We've given it some configuration. And that's what we've done here. We've given it some configuration. As you can see, I'm asking it to use the action to call the action, right? Like, so I'm giving it some details on how to call it and so on and so forth. I'll publish the code in the GitHub so if you all can take a look at it. Goal is to have enough configuration so that 
the system can understand what the user is asking for and call the relevant API. And there you have it, a quick way on how you can develop your own custom GPTs and in doing so, be able to call APIs to other services to provide your custom GPT with a powerful upgrade. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you like more of this content, please feel free to subscribe.